This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Spiritual Psychic with Sarah Wiseman, where you'll learn how to unlock the secrets of spiritual intuition and your own psychic gifts. Here's Sarah. Hey everybody, I'm Sarah Wiseman. Today, we're going to talk about chakras and how you can heal yours. So first of all, are chakras even real? Uh, to a person who has experienced the energy of a chakra, they are as real as any other part of our being. And yet, for other people, chakras are more of a concept or philosophy or, or a kind of a psychology that lends context to our experiences. Other people also think they have no connection whatsoever to these, these energy centers. So whatever you think of chakras, there's a consistency throughout uh, scripture, literature, and tales of personal experience, you know, that really keeps chakras at the forefront of the metaphysical and mystical teachings for thousands of years. And of course, chakras have now well, they've been here a long time, but they've made our way into our vocabulary and they're in modern culture. And we use these chakra based feelings like uh, terms like gut feelings and heartfelt. This is all about the chakras. Uh, so, bit, for example, have you ever felt in your abdomen a sensation that warned you about something? And that's your third chakra speaking. Um, if you've ever felt a warm feeling in your chest um, as you hug someone and that's your heart chakra talking to you, or maybe you just find yourself responding to a call or a text with, you know, I was just thinking about you and that's your, your crown chakra at work with its feelers reaching out infinitely connecting into our oneness. So a little knowledge of chakras can be really useful to your overall well-being and healing. And when you practice the mystical techniques you, of opening or healing chakras, you can improve your overall health and heighten your intuition and increase your psychic awareness. So let's, let's review again or review a little more deeply. Chakras are circles of energy located along the long axis of our body from the tailbone to the top of the skull, and the layout of the seven chakras is aligned to our spinal column. So chakras are in the back, but they are also in the front. It's just an interesting way to think about the spine as having a front and backward direction. So traditionally, chakras are shown in a drawing, so they're shown as like flat circles, but they're really a spherical globe of energy filling three-dimensional space that changes size by expanding and contracting. Each chakra presents in a specific location on your body. It has a certain energetic quality to it, and it can be influenced by words, actions, thoughts, and other energy forms. So starting from the bottom going up, the first chakra is the root, the second chakra is the seed. The third chakra we might call the core. The fourth chakra is the heart. The third, the fifth chakra is the voice. The sixth chakra is the third eye. And the seventh chakra is the crown. Okay, so, you know, you can look at them separately, but you can also look at them as a functional collective not unlike the other systems of the body, you know, circulatory, digestive, nervous. So the chakras are separate units that function on their own, but they also work together in relationship to each other. 
And so as you begin to explore the system of chakras, you're gonna find that your understanding grows in ways that can be applied to all aspects of your physical, emotional, and spiritual life. So when we're working on chakra healing, we want to keep it really simple. Um, it may not be necessary and sometimes even misguided to try to figure out every tiny detail of a dysfunctional chakra. Or even more commonly, uh, we hear like, I need to open my chakras. Maybe, maybe this isn't what's called for. So really, it doesn't matter that much in regards to healing and restoring proper function if a, ch if a chakra is opened or closed, spinning clockwise or counterclockwise or anything else. In fact, sometimes we can create new problems from trying to redirect, redirect chakras or force them open or closed. So what can be most effective is to simply identify there's a problem in an area and then incorporate a holistic therapy such as yogas, ma yoga, mantras, crystal healing, mudra, um, energy healing, sound healing, those kinds of things. Even uh, meditation, dream, dreaming can all be utilized as a way of working with your chakras. And simply identifying that the chakra is not doing its job is usually enough to begin to remedy any imbalance. So if you give healing attention to any specific chakra, it will know what to do. Your body's own wisdom knows uh, if your chakras are inactive or needing stimulation or too active and need cooling off. So there are ways of aligning and balancing chakras to work in sync with the whole being and bring these energies into alignment for the highest good of all, all of us. Uh, so one of the ways we can do this is we can work with mantra. Now chakras are very attuned to our bodily systems and particularly the nervous system, which is in turn responsive to sound, hence, mantras are very effective for working with chakra. Now, you may have heard these classic mantra sounds that relate to the chakra, lam, vam, ram, yam, ham, and om. So these are pretty commonly known, but there are others that may actually work better for you. Um, we can use mantras drawn from all kinds of traditions, and when we say them, we're meant to be in a hypnotic, um, trance state, hyp hypnotic trance state, or gentle trance state, as I sometimes call it, so we can produce an altered state of consciousness while we're working with the mantra and healing the chakra. So some of the best mantras to use are, depending on which chakra you're working on, the Rama mantra, the Satanama mantra, the Gobindahari mantra, the Shanti Mantra, the Om Mantra, the Ong, O-N-G Mantra, and finally the breath. The breath in itself becomes um, a, a wordless mantra. So what is a mantra? A mantra is a thought. It is a thought of as a repetitive phrase, um, but mantras aren't just repeated words, Man means mind and tra means vibration. So uh, when we think of this mind vibration, we understand that all of our thoughts, all of our thoughts are mantras or mind vibrations. So when we meditate with mantra, it's actually an intentional focusing of the vibrations of our mind. Now we already know in the physical world that every action has a reaction, but this is the same with our thoughts. This is the same with our intentions. So the science of mantra uses vibration as silent thought or vocalized aloud. So you can use it in your own mind as part of your meditation, thinking or saying in your own mind, the mantra or vocalized to engage with the world around us and also add that element of sound vibration. <clears throat> 
So again, mantras can be chanted out loud or said out loud, but they can also be repeated silently or you can just listen to them. And many people find that simply having mantra play in the background can be this very soothing um, practice and a very good antidote to anxiety and stress and to helping your chakras heal. And finally, breath has a rhythm. So do chants. So um, when you are working in this state of meditation and working with your mantras and working to heal your chakras, you can always take an inhale as you feel a natural break in the sound and then a pause. And whenever you've, this is going a little deeper, but whenever you've used up your breath, you can inhale again and begin the next round of chant. So you're beginning to practice a circular form of breathing. So if you'd like to learn really so much more about healing your chakras, please go to sarahweisman.com and then go to courses and then go to the chakra project. And for this, uh, course, the Chakra Project, we are especially excited to have our first um, expert guest teacher, Dr. Steve Koch. And Dr. Steve is an author, a chiropractor, a master energy healer, and master teacher of meditation and kundalini yoga for over 40 years. Uh, and so in the Chakra Project, he's created lessons and mantras for you to heal your own chakras and as part of the bonus of this particular course um, you get all the sound healing as a separate file so you can use it anytime you want on your own devices. I'm Sarah Wiseman and thank you so much for listening.